Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's presentation, Carbine's Free Coronavirus Monitoring to ECC. This presentation is brought to you by Commercial Electronics. If you'd like to learn more about our recording solution, third-party quality assurance services, or Carbine 911, visit our website at comelectronics.com. This webinar is a special presentation in light of current events. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items so you know how to participate in today's event. If you're lis listening in using your computer speaker system, you're automatically muted to eliminate background noise. If you prefer to join over the phone, just select the handset in the audio pane at the bottom right and the dial-in information will be displayed. You can submit questions about today's lesson at any time by typing your questions into the Q&A pane of the control panel, and they'll be addressed during the Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Now, once you leave today's presentation, you'll receive a survey, and we would really appreciate it if you would complete that. You will also receive a follow-up email within 48 hours with a link to view a recording of the presentation. My name is Beth English and I'm the Program Manager for Commercial Electronics QA, QI program and Higher Ground Instructor. Our, present, our presenter today is Paul Tetro, Vice President of Strategic Partnerships with Carbine 911. So let's get our session started. Paul? Okay. Thanks, Beth. And as as you could tell, this is a live thing because it just it just dropped my PowerPoint. Let me fire it back up here. Sorry about that. Not sure what happened, but uh, this was the slide that Beth was referring to. Let me start there. Um, so I I appreciate everyone uh, coming uh, on the seminar today, and and actually because. We're in such a kind of an interesting um, and trying time, but I'd like to take just a uh, maybe a moment of silence uh, just for the people that have uh, been affected by this virus, the people that have died, and also the people that have you know fallen on hard times due to this virus. So just maybe just take a, a second here to pause and reflect on that. Okay, let me talk about our topics for today is I don't know how many people on this call know who Carbine is. So we're going to do a little overview of Carbine. I promise it will be brief, uh, just in case you're not sure what we do and, and who we are. Um, we're going to show you how Carbine's technology works. We'll actually do a demonstration uh, and show you how it will work. Uh, we're then going to talk about how that uh, technology can be used to help to deal with the coronavirus, uh, managing the caseload and keeping uh, personal distancing and all those kinds of things. So we're going to show you how it can uh, directly affect um, our uh, uh, handling of the, the coronavirus. And obviously, we have questions and wrap up, but if there's any questions that you have along the way, either raise your hand or if you want to just uh, chime in, feel free to do so. All right, let's start out with uh, who's Carbine. Just start with some numbers. The company was founded in 2014. We have five uh, offices globally. Uh, our headquarters are in New York. Um, we currently, with our solution where it's installed, we serve a population of about 210 million people. Uh, we have uh, a little over 30 installations in the U.S. We basically are all over the country of Mexico uh, we've also uh, have uh, installations in places like Singapore and Israel and uh, other parts of the world and in Europe as well. We handle about four and a half million calls a month, um, and uh, we cover over 50 agencies. We've got a number of partners. Obviously, Commercial Electronics has sponsored this uh, particular presentation, but we have other uh, partners like uh, uh, Amazon and uh, uh, Cisco, et cetera. And we do have a, a, a network operating center in the U.S. based out of Houston that handles our tech support 24-7 uh, by 365 support. Um, so one of the things that uh, uh, is happening in today's world, and obviously it's, it's doing nothing but getting worse, is that the 
emergency situations are being bombarded and emergency uh, call centers are being bombarded with more and more information. Um, you know, there's map data, there's, there's text to 911, there's video potentially coming in. Uh, you've got to interact with all the other players that are in your center. You're taking notes. Uh, you're pulling together conference calls. And then there's all the smart city stuff that's just coming on the horizon. And all of that can play a part uh, in helping with a 911 situation. But what it ends up with most callers is that you end up with workstations that look like this. You know, you have to have your head on a swivel and all this information is kind of scattered from one display to the next or in 16 different databases. And it becomes difficult as a single person trying to stay focused on a, a potential emergency event, becomes difficult to know which screen to look at and all that kind of uh, stuff. So uh, what one of our missions at, at Carbine is to be the the platform that aggregates and consolidates all of that information. So if it's smart city cameras, if it's video from the caller, uh, if it's any other type of information, we want to be able to deliver that to you in a concise interface that collects all that information and makes it available so you don't have to you know, jump around and look at 10 different screens to figure out what's going on. I'll give you a good example, and, and one of the things that, that uh, uh, our solution is more than anything is a, uh, is a platform. In the same way that your iPhone is a way to collect app, uh, different apps that makes your iPhone even more uh, interesting and more effective, we want to be the same thing for the public safety world. We want to have a platform where people can connect solutions into it, and we can consolidate it and bring it in through a unified interface. Um, what we're looking to do is to take your traditional 911 and make it live 1-1. The ability to see what's going on firsthand without having to listen to somebody who might be in a panicked mode trying to figure out what exactly is happening and what resources need to be uh, provided. So we're uh, basically the only platform on the marketplace today that has the following capabilities, the dynamic location. So we can find your location based on your handheld device as opposed to triangulating cell towers. Um, we also provide an instant chat capability. So if for some reason you either have a speech impediment or you have uh, some limitation to your being able to talk, uh, in the case of a corona uh, virus potential patient, patient, maybe they're just that sick or they've got a sore throat or whatever the case might be. We have an instant chat capability. We can turn the phone uh, camera on. Uh, obviously, we do all of this with the uh, caller's permission, so we don't just ramble onto their phone. We, we, we make sure that they've kind of uh, uh, clicked off on it, if you will. Um, we also have this new thing that's very exciting called incident conferencing. So this is the idea that if I've opened a, a, a rich media session with you as a caller, uh, so I've got a video going, I've got a chat session going, I'm, I'm talking to you on the phone, uh, I'm seeing your device location on a map. If someone else, either in, the, in your center or anyone who has the Carbine uh, uh, solution installed on their workstation, they can click on a button and they can join that conference. They can see the video. They can see the chat session. They can, and their, their map on their screen gets oriented to wherever this caller is calling in from. So when we demo this today, I'll show you this live. You can see how it works. It's really pretty interesting. As, a, as an extension to incident conferencing, we will also have something called first responders connection. And that's the idea that I can now forward this out, broadcast it, if you will, all this rich media session, I can broadcast that to the first responders. And what's nice with First Responder Connect is I don't need anything installed on their laptop or their smart tablet or, or their smartphone. Any, any device that has a browser will be able to accept the smart session, and they'll be able to see it in their vehicle or on the street, wherever they are, uh, before they arrive on scene. 
Another thing that's uh, coming out, this isn't quite available yet, but it's coming out very soon, is what we call our global incident view. This is the idea of having a map-centric view of all the calls maybe coming into your jurisdiction, being able to click on an icon on a map and see if there's a video coming in. Uh, you can also answer the phone. Uh, you have a, a bunch of other capabilities from this global incident view. So if you're a supervisor or you're responsible for multiple PSAPs or ECCs, uh, this would be a great tool to let you look at the big picture, if you will, of what's going on. We've also built all of this capability on top of probably the world's most robust PBX system, which is the Cisco Unified uh, Communications Manager. And so we can give you full call taking, complete 911 call handling on top of all of this other information that's part of our platform. So that's a little bit about who we are and what we do. We believe that we have the ultimate incident connectivity uh, that combines all the information and shares it between the caller, the ECC, the first responders, and anyone else that needs to get involved. In the case of a... Uh, of a coronavirus situation, maybe you have a, a doctor's office or, or a, a registered nurse who's available, but she's a can't be on every call. So if somebody calls in, you look at their video, you see they're not feeling well, uh, you can automatically let the, the, the nurse or the doctor connect in and, and, and take over the, uh, uh, the situation. So that's a little bit about who Carvine is uh, and what our capabilities are. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a live demonstration. And in order to do the live demonstration, I'm going to exit briefly here out of our display. And I'm going to show you what we call our C Live Universe Plus product. And see this little bar that I'm bringing onto the screen? It's, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, what it's called an over-the-top solution. So this can sit on top of any call-taking solution. So obviously, if you're a 911 center, you've got a very robust call-taking solution, but you could be uh, uh, any call-taking solution because our, our system works with 911 calls as well as with administrative calls. So if somebody's calling a um, uh, coronavirus hotline, it's not a 911 call. We can do the exact same thing uh, with any call, whether it's a 911 call or not, which is important because several solutions on the market are triggered by a 911 call, and we don't necessarily have to be that way. Now, what I'm going to do so I can demonstrate the full capabilities, I am going to show you a, uh, this is a remote, so I've, I'm using something called TeamViewer, you probably have heard of it. So I've actually logged into our demo center, which is in New York City. I'm actually in New Jersey myself, right? And uh, so you can see that there's another uh, person with our solution installed on their system. And I'm just going to show you how we can incident conference between each other. So the first thing I'm going to do, and you might lose my voice for a second, is I'm going to add a call. I'm going to actually call our simulated uh, 911 um, and I'll show you our I've got a uh, I've got a VoIP phone so if this was if I was actually in my uh, our test center we have physical phones on our desk but since I'm simulating here you can see I've got a simulated VoIP phone and I'm going to add a call to call 911 well our, our version of 911 so let me jump over here Okay, so I've, I've merged this call together, and um, I have basically, uh, you can see that even before I've answered the call, we're able to, in some cases, be able to pick up the location of the 
call before I even answer it. So I am going to get rid of that little thing. I'm going to do that and actually drop this call. And um, so now you can see that uh, this is the location. You can see my accuracy on my call here is within nine meters. So if I, for example, were to zoom in on this map a little bit, this is where I'm calling from. Actually, this the satellite picture was taken. This is a brand new building that I live in, and it was taken before uh, they finished the construction, so it's still dirt, but this is where, almost exactly where I'm sitting. I'm within four meters of accuracy. You'll notice also that the video camera here is turned on. So you can see inside my office, which is kind of scary in some ways. This could be the person who's calling in on the, uh, on the corona uh, situation. He looks pretty happy in this picture, but obviously I can swap the camera, show my face, uh, and do whatever uh, I need to do. If I also, let's say that for some reason I don't understand, I can also type uh type a message and i can send that i can i can respond back and i'm just going to type a quick message here um and you can see it, my message comes back in i have a fever now what's interesting is i'm i'm in new jersey um and you can see my address there, Stanley Avenue, Bayonne, New Jersey, right here on the left. I'm showing you this other call station that I've remoted into. They can go into this, see this uh, sharing thing. It says, look, there's a call in progress. That's my phone number, 630-488-800. If I click on that, I automatically notice my map gets oriented to the exact same location. If I put on my my thing here i can i can see it's in the exact same location i if i click on the video there's the video that i'm seeing but they're seeing it in new york city or if the doctor was on the other side of the united states it wouldn't matter and there's also been a chat session so you can see that i can pick up the chat session as well so this is what we call incident conferencing and it's extremely powerful in how it works and uh, we can sit behind any call taking system, whether it's 911 or just a, a hotline that you set up based on a, the crisis. And we can work with the calls that come in. We also, I forgot to mention when the call first came in, you notice that the, the number was picked up automatically, put into the system, and automatically uh, was able to locate that call on the map. So. That's, that's a very, uh, we call that uh, auto-detect. So we, we have screen, uh, uh, artificial intelligence uh, that uh, reads your screen and pulls the number from wherever the call-taking system pops the number on the screen. So it's a very powerful uh, capability. And what's cool here, I'm going to show you, I'm going to get out of one of these things. What's cool here is if I, if I decide I'm done and I, I want to get out of that, so I'm out right um, now maybe the, the call continues I, I didn't think that was very uh, important but now I, uh, I get a, a text saying hey you got to jump back on this thing so all I, have, I can jump in and out as, as much as I want and I still get all the same information I still get the video um, and I can also notice that we have one if there were six people that needed to be on this call assuming they had our solution all six of them could be watching at the same time. So this rich media conferencing is something very unique to Carbine, and it's very powerful, especially in a situation where multiple people need to get involved to help analyze what it is that they're seeing. Any questions from anyone? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll end the demo. Oh. I just simply click yes. Uh, we do yes. have one question. Um, is that true Annie Alley location, and does it work on cell calls and landlines? Okay, so it's actually better than Alley Annie Alley location because it uh, 
basically um, uh, uses the the actual device location to locate where you are. So, like for you saw my accuracy here is within four meters. This is uh, uh, when 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 this came up, I actually sent a, an SMS message to my phone asking for permission to get the ad, uh, to get the device location and to use the camera. And I said yes, yes. And that's as soon as I said yes, then the, our system uh, analyzes some sensors and things on the phone and figures out the X Y coordinate to send back to our map, which gets, then gets displayed. So this is more accurate than Annie Alley, and we don't care if it's a 911 call, although we do have an interface into Rapid SOS. So if, if, if it is a 911 call and they update the AML server that Rapid SOS manages, we'll read that first. But if it's not a 911 call, as soon as I say yes on the link, you can look at my device location, we pull it right from the phone. There's no uh, there's no uh, Annie Alley involved. Any any other that questions? Question that was a good one. So far. Okay, so I am going to jump back into the presentation. So now that you have an idea of how our solution works, I'm just going to move this off the screen here. Now that you have an idea of how our solution works, how can we use that? Uh, where's my PowerPoint right here? All right, so we did our demo. Uh, I should probably uh, get out of this. Hold on a second. I've got to do one more thing here. Uh, oh, we have another question. Okay, go ahead. Uh, they want to know, what if we have our 911 system off the grid and it does not access the Internet? Um, that is, uh, uh, our, our system is, is fully cloud-based. So one of the things that you would have to have, to have access to is uh, certainly Internet connectivity. Now, we, we can uh, create a VPN. Um, and uh, but you know, for example, I'm using my internet out of my house to be able to sh to do the demo. But you do need connectivity. It's a cloud solution, so uh, that would be a consideration. Wherever you are, you want to you know make sure you've got a decent uh, connectivity, and um, and probably a VPN. Okay. Any anything and else? Is this free offer? Yes. Is this free offer available to secondary or tertiary PSAPs? This is available to anyone who's involved in dealing with the, uh, the pandemic. So we're making it available as long as, uh, uh, you know, this is a crisis and help deal with, uh, you know, with tr hopefully remote screening of people. So let's, that kind of is a good segue into the next part of the presentation here. So how, how do we help with coronavirus monitoring, right? Um, basically, we think that um, we can help deal with corona by adding the video, knowing the exact location, improving, giving alternative communication capabilities, the fact that we can implement this in, in the matter of a day. So if you decide you want to move forward, it's not like it's going to take us three months to implement. Otherwise, you know, we're going to miss the, uh, hopefully miss the uh, pandemic. Uh, you saw the incident conferencing. We'll go through some examples of that. And obviously, we keep citizen privacy at the forefront. We don't do anything on this, as I mentioned earlier, that doesn't get the approval of the citizen first. So uh, let's break each one of these down. Let's start with the video screening. So here's an example. We can get live remote access to the, uh, the patients. We can see what, they're, what they look like, if they're really sniffing, coughing, et cetera. Uh, obviously, since we can do this uh, remotely, we keep that social distancing that everybody's been talking about, uh, where they don't have to physically come into a center. We can start the diagnosis remotely. Um, 
We also have a partner. Remember, I mentioned that we have some uh, that our our platform is 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 there for uh, uh, collecting different solutions. They, they don't necessarily have to be solutions that were created by Carbine. We have a partner who has a, a video capability that can actually read some vitals, your heart rate, your oxygen levels, and things like that, uh, just by holding and looking at your face for 30 seconds. Um, the other thing I was going to mention I forgot was notice the, the, uh, the bullet points that I have. These are, this is the official coronavirus icon. So I don't know what it takes to get your own icon, but they, they've, they've already got an icon for the coronavirus. Um, so that's the video screening aspect of that. We've already talked about the location capability. So when I have uh, the uh, uh, lo location determined, uh, we have several map views. I, I showed you the satellite view uh, in, in a, in a not-too-distant future, but uh, probably in the next week or two. Uh, we'll also be able to, to plug street view uh, directly from our map, um, which gives you, uh, obviously, an idea of what's in the area if, if for some reason you have to send an ambulance or whatever. Um, you can also use this for patient tracking. So the way our system works, you don't have to rebid to get an updated location like you do with Annie Alley. There's no rebidding. If you move 10 meters or 10 seconds transpires, we snap a new location from your device. So if somebody's on the move and they were supposed to be quarantined or whatever, uh, you could follow them with our map uh, assuming they were active in a, in a session uh, with, with your call center. Um, in terms of communication, you saw the chat capability. So uh, we could offer that if somebody is either trying to talk through a safety mask and you can't really hear them, they're muffled, or if they have some kind of speech impediment, obviously you can deal with them through chat. This doesn't matter whether you've got text to 911 installed this session gets created dynamically uh, and allows you to, uh, to have another way to communicate uh, with somebody who might be sick. As I mentioned, this is a, a, a cloud-based solution, so it sits uh, in the cloud. You have to have connectivity to uh, get it to work properly, but it sits on top of your current solution. You saw that little bar that we had that kind of pops out. Uh, there's no integration that's required to your current call-taking solution. Um, we don't see it as uh, any kind of a risk because it doesn't interrupt what you're doing. Um, if anything, it adds more information and makes that information uh, shareable. Um, we, as I mentioned before, it's, a, it's, a, it's basically a one-day installation. And the user interface, as I click on those little icons, right, It'll open that window, close the window, open the window, close the window, so you can see what you want to see. Uh, and if there's a video or something, there's somebody's doing something you don't want to see, you can just click on the video icon and it shuts that window. So very flexible in how it works. We showed you the incident conferencing. It basically works like this. You've got a call taker who's engaged in a carbine session, and now all of a sudden we want to bring in a, med a medical specialist uh, they can just simply pick the call off the list from their station, wherever they are, if they're remote at the hospital or wherever they might happen to be, uh, and then that same information gets sent to them. And again, as you saw, as I did in the demo, I clicked on and off uh, uh, at, at my discretion, and you can, have more, you can have as many people as you want join. Uh, it's not limited to just having one other participant. Um, the other thing that we've added is, uh, and this it's it's new enough where I don't even have it on my test system yet, but you'll notice uh, there is a little uh, coronavirus icon that's going to be added to our interface, and you can see where the red box is there. If I click on that, basically it it opens a window that has different questions or qualifications that you may want to collect about each caller. Now, that what you can put in there is completely customizable by you, and I have to point out that this is not going to, this isn't 
available yet in production. We're still working in the test lab on this, but we hope to have it available by the, the middle of uh, or the second week of uh, April. Um, so this could be interesting because now you can collect specific information from each of the callers. You could start accumulating some statistics and then we've even well, you'll be able to uh, put those on a map and you can see depending on what you want to collect, you can see on a map now where all of these calls and the incidents and so forth uh, and what categories are are there. And all the people that called out, even if they had nothing wrong with them, uh, you can get that kind of visual reporting uh, from the user. Um, the last thing I want to make a point of is that we are very sensitive to citizen privacy. So these, are, these sessions are initiated by your call center. So if somebody looks, sounds like they have a, a, an issue, you can send them a link, and then that link, if they click yes and yes, that opens the session. So you initiate it at your discretion. It's not just automatically popping up on their phone uh, immediately. So every session has to be approved by the caller, and then when the session ends, so does the access to the caller's mobile device and their data. So that basically, there's a historical record that's kept in the cloud that, that includes the video and the categories or whatever you collected from the call, but we, don't, we can't go back. Even if that caller called in in two minutes, they'd still have to give us permission again to get access to their phone. So it's very sensitive in terms of uh, the, the, uh, the users uh, being able to, uh, to opt out if they don't want to participate. So I've showed you the current interface, and because we're working on a newer, newer interface that if you were to get involved in this, this may become available probably within the next month or so, uh, I just want to give you an idea that the new interface is, is, uh, is a lot more, I think, user-friendly than the one that I just did the demo on. So basically, our map now, uh, first off, in the new interface, every window is independent, the map, the chat, the video, and they're all individually resizable. So notice how big this map is versus the one that I showed you in the demo, which was restricted to the size of that little box that opened up. Um, I also have access on the map to the satellite and the street view that I talked about. The video, again, is a separate window. And notice the little button in the middle. That button is, allows you to take a picture. So if something came by in the video, a face, a weapon, or something else, you could click the, the, the little button there and take a picture, a still of that frame. Um, and then you have the chat, again, which is individual uh, capability. We've already talked about the incident conferencing, so I'm going to go through this a little bit quickly. But, you know, if I want a dispatcher or somebody else to join the session, we saw how this works already. Uh, I now have all of this new information. So what I'm going to show you here, this is from our lab. So the, the new icon is just that little disk. So when, when a call comes in, it opens that window, puts the call on the map, Notice I can resize the map now. I can go to the satellite view, which you're all familiar with. I can then zoom in on the map. I can also hit the street view, and it shows me the street view, uh, again, without having to leave the map or anything else. Uh, the more I zoom in, the more detail I get about what the things are around me. Uh, so I'm able to do that type of thing. Uh, again, I can zoom in or out however I want. Uh, and then here's the video that comes in. Notice I can take snap a picture. So I just took a picture of the video. Uh, and also I can resize the video. So if I wanted the video to be on its own screen or uh, make it as big as I want, uh, likewise with the chat, it's its own independent window. Um, I can make it as large as I want. Notice also on the map now it's showing me the breadcrumbs of the multiple locations that were collected uh, for that incident. Um, and obviously, if I hit the data sharing, I could share all of this with anybody who has a, 
carbine solution installed on their uh, laptop. So that is our, um, it's called C Live Universe Plus is the name of the product. And I appreciate everybody's time and attention. Um, as uh, uh, Obviously, we're working with our, our partners, uh, Commercial Electronics. If you're interested to try to participate in our coronavirus program, we would love to uh, have a follow-on session with you and talk about how we can make that happen. Any, any questions? Anything? I don't have uh, any Beth? other questions yet. No, I don't have any other questions listed yet. Um, but um, uh, we'll, we'll, we do we'll want take to... a minute and. Okay. And just see if if any okay. questions pop up. And I just wanted to remind everybody as the the screen shows here. Um, that this presentation has been made possible by Commercial Electronics. And if you want information on the Carbine uh, C-Live, then you can send us an email. It's there on the screen at info at com. Um, I do have a question here. Um, we are current higher ground and commercial electronics customer. Do we reach out to them directly or to Carbine? Um, you can reach out to Higher Ground, not Higher Ground, I'm sorry, Commercial Electronics, whoever your representative is for Commercial Electronics, which um, could be Bill Bihar um, or myself. But if you uh, if you have our numbers directly, you can call us or you can send the email to info at comelectronics.com. All right, Beth. Um, again, everyone, okay. thank you for your time and your interest. Good luck with handling uh, the coronavirus uh, pandemic. And if we can help, please let us know. We'd love to uh, try to make it easier for you. All right. Thank you very much, Paul. I appreciate this. My pleasure. Okay, I will leave this screen up um, for a few more minutes in case anybody wants to copy of any of this information down. Um, otherwise, if there are no other questions, um, everybody have a great day. Thank you all. Bye.